Hey, what's going on guys? Chris here and welcome back to another Outriders video. Today, let's take a look at this really awesome and I would even dare say face roll build for the trickster i've been playing this pretty much non-stop since lower challenge tiers all the way up to challenge tier 15 it literally carried me all the way over there and it's literally face roll because you both deal huge amounts of damage but also heal for huge amounts so you're essentially going to be a perpetually regenerating killing machine that's gonna have no problem to stay in the middle of as many enemies as possible and deal as much damage as possible as a matter of fact, this class and this build will thrive in the middle of the enemies. So let's talk about it. We're gonna start things off really quickly with the skill tree distribution. Now, of course, this isn't anything out of the ordinary. Still, the assassin skill line being the best or one of the best in the game at the very least. Of course, you're gonna want to prioritize everything that says either close range damage or weapon damage or shotgun damage because that's basically what we're using with this build. On top of that, as always, we're gonna be using Outrider Executioner as well as Disruptive Firepower since the skills that we use on a low cooldown are going to be movement and deception so we're gonna be spamming these so that our uptime is going to be 100% or as close to 100% as possible with these two perks right here with a bonus of 70% additional weapon damage between them and everything else is pretty much like either magazine size increase either damage to weapon when you have a lot of enemies in close range either shotgun damage like i said previously the only other thing on top that is worth mentioning is maybe the fact that i've been using a few cooldown reduction mods on the movement skills so that i can spam my hunt the prey a little bit more but that is literally it of course in terms of the skills you can already see them these are the ones that we're using hunt the prey with the venator's knife i'm going to talk about that in just a little bit and finally the twisted rounds Yes, these are still DPS kings in the end game, and they will likely always be until or unless they get nerfed into the ground. But with that being said and done, let's talk about the inventory because this is the important bit. This is what's gonna make your build actually shine. And I've mentioned this combo before and I stand by it because now it seems to be even better than before with a three-way kind of mod combination that will make bleeding and damage dealing a lot of fun. So in this case, the Bulwark, a really easy to acquire weapon simply because Tiago right here, he sells it pretty much for or quite a bit of uh, yeah, drop out resources. If you buy this at a lower eye level, you can get it for cheaper or you can wait until later when you get enough of these um, resources right here to buy it. Eventually, you're going to get enough of it to afford it but the reason we want this is for the ultimate bleeding bullets which inflicts bleed on enemies on a one second cooldown so this means these are always going to be applied from that point on we will combine that with the vampiric mag which makes killing shots on enemies afflicted with a bleed effect to replenish 50 percent of your ammo in your magazine as i've said previously i find this combo right here with the vampiric mag and the bleed a little bit more superior than something with for example the perpetua mobile which um, has that requirement to be under 35 percent or less ammo but that has the problem that if you have under 35 percent ammo and the enemy doesn't die in that it means that you yeah just wasted that magazine and you're not going to replenish it but at the same time it also has the benefit that it's a little bit better against trash mobs that die faster so it's a matter of actually maybe even using two different weapons with two of these different effects but going back to the bleed build this is what we're gonna combine it we're gonna combine it with the thirst for blood killing enemies with weapons while they're afflicted with a bleed increases your weapon leech by 40 percent and this makes this build so face roll right here not only do you replenish your ammo constantly when you're using these two combinations but if you just kill a small little critter right there and then immediately turn onto a bigger boss or onto a captain or onto an elite you can regenerate 40 percent of the damage that you deal which is going to be absurd i can generate so many shields simply because i have huge weapon leech from the thirst for blood that i can literally like play with my eyes closed as long as i hit targets 
I can just continue without ever worrying dying. From this point on we're gonna use about a handful of mods that will buff up your damage and firepower to insane levels. Three of them are going to be on your armor and one of them is going to be on the weapon. So starting with the ones on the armor we have the crit stack, then we have the bloodlust followed by of course the stare into the barrel and finally on the weapon we also have the killing spree. Now starting things off with the bloodlust this is one of the most important because it also gives you one of the highest and most sustainable buffs. Essentially, as you kill targets, you get a firepower bonus that stacks up to three times and it lasts 10 seconds. So you're gonna constantly have this on as you kill more and more targets. The other one is going to be the stair into the barrel. Essentially, as you have more and more targets around you, it's going to increase your firepower by huge amounts, up to five times. So the more targets in close range, the higher the bonus. Bonus. Finally, the crit stack is going to further buff that on top. As you deal critical strikes against enemies' weak points, it's going to again provide more firepower and also a little bit of anomaly in there too. Bonus that will stack up to five times for even more bonus on that. The final piece is going to be the killing spree, which kinda acts a bit like the bloodlust from your gear, as in the more targets you kill, the more it increases, but this time around, straight up your weapon damage by 25% and since this increases by up to three times it means that you get it up to 75% which is going to be absolutely off the hook essentially if you look at your stats if you combine all of these mods together you will get over 300 and like 30% 350% maybe weapon damage increase from the raw firepower that you're getting. So as you can see, you're going to thrive in situations where you are surrounded by a lot of enemies, which is essentially going to be everything in challenge tier 15. So you're going to want to do the following to start rolling and like snowballing your build and increasing your damage even more in every fight. First of all, taking advantage of the bloodlust as well as killing spree, both of which provide killing shots with a ton of weapon damage bonus or firepower bonus. And between these to you get at least 100% weapon damage increase. From this point on you're going to use your abilities and because you, you have those passives it's going to be another like 70% weapon damage increase on top and then you also have the stair into the barrel and your passive in the assassin's skill line so these are going to further buff your damage because you're going to be surrounded by enemies in close range and finally the crit stack your final piece as you deal critical shots against the boss or like an elite or maybe a captain it's going to further add to that and you're going to see like at least half a million damage with even a shotgun like this an automatic shotgun with 20 shots and it's gonna be like super fun to melt them in literal seconds add on top the fact that if you just kill one small enemy you can go back at the big target and because of your vampiric nature with this build you're going to regenerate not just your health but also your shields extremely fast and you're constantly going to have them on during all of the fights unless something goes horribly wrong. Now this doesn't mean that this build is going to be fully on glass cannon and there are in fact two mods in here that will tremendously increase your survivability on top of the fact that you also have that leech. One of them is the mitigation from death which is going to be stacking a ton of armor when you just kill enemies when you aim down the sights which with the shotgun is something that you're going to do almost constantly. So you will constantly have over 130,000 bonus armor at the maximum level just with this one right here which is going to get you super close to about 85% which is the max cap on the armor. In this case with my build I think that currently I have about 82.5% which is plenty enough in this situation. The second one is going to be the emergency stance. Now I'm not sure if this is good because it's genuinely amazing or because there is some bug with the calculation of the damage mitigation. Essentially if you drop below 30% HP with this thing it's going to give you the golem ability from the devastator for about four seconds which is going 
going to mitigate about 75% of the incoming damage but the thing is that I think that this is broken and it adds that mitigation on top of your existing armor so if you already have about 85 or 80% 80 physical damage reduction I think the golem is going to act on top of that and will further reduce the remaining incoming damage by another like 75% I'm not entirely sure because it seems it's a little bit bugged right now but even if it's not it's an amazing skill to have that will save you and on a relatively low cooldown of only about 10 seconds so this is the build right here this is what carried me this is what I had a ton of fun with definitely test it out let me know down below how is your experience with it or if you are running with something similar in the meantime thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one